the day that you spent it in the West Coast program, take us through sort of um, how, how did you, like what would be a typical day? Was it more fly on the wall stuff? Was it assisting with rehab? Were there um, some roles and responsibilities that you had or was it more just sort of uh, case by case depending on what was going on in the day? You know, to summarise it, I suppose, for you and keep it relatively brief, their players in the reserves would play at East Perth with me on the weekend. I'd do a bit of a handover back to the Eagles medical staff, um, you know, after that on the Saturday night. And then I'd come in on the Monday and kind of watch them, the doctors, physios assess what they thought about the injury, I suppose. Um, and then I'd help out like a lot of prac students do, whether it's s &C or physio, whether it's strapping ankles in a physio sense or helping with the screening or being an extra in a rehab drill or those kind of things. How often would you recommend a development athlete to try something and then reflect on it and recognise, okay, that's not, I'm going to bin that one and I'm going to move on to the next one. Is it three times? Is, is there a certain number or, do you, or is another one of those ones that's sort of once you get it a couple of goes and then go off your gut feeling? Yeah, I think your gut feeling will tell you quite a bit, but probably the main thing with that is you only try one thing new at a time. So don't try ice baths and a bike ride because if you get worse, you don't know which one does or makes you worse. So yeah. if you're nailing your sleep and you're nailing your nutrition and then you want to add other things in or take them out, just do one at a time. So, you know, right, this works for me or this doesn't work for me. And once you know it does or it doesn't, then maybe you can try something yep. extra. When working with a with an athlete and building that buy-in, um, what are some important strategies to do from a relationship point of view and almost from an education point of view when working with, with athletes for the first time? Well, I think the, <laughs> the first thing, which is, again, really basic, but you have to be able to do it yourself. Yep. So if we use a clinic example, if you're in the gym showing or demonstrating exercises only demonstrate <laughs> what you can do and do well and what you think they can do and do well um, because otherwise that's not going to work and then if you put your elite sport hat on um, if you're working in rehab something that I love doing and it kills two birds with one stone in a way is um, it gets your exercise done if you're running with them or doing an off-leg session with them, it builds that rapport that, you know, this guy's not afraid of working hard with me. And I know that yeah, this is really bad. I'm injured and I'm in rehab and I'm trying to get reconditioned. Um, but at least I've got someone here. How often would you, would you tap into that throughout a rehab process? Is that something that happens on a weekly basis or is it just sort of, and, and then when do you make the decision on, yeah, I'm going to dive in today and jump in with them? <laughs> Uh, well, I try and do it every day, um, but I'm now 35 years old with two kids, doesn't sleep much, so uh, sometimes I get a bit sore trying to yeah. keep up yeah. with um, elite building athletes. Resilient, building resilient. <laughs> yeah, I need to get more resilient. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess as a rule, I will try and do some of the session with them every day. That's amazing. And then if I'm too sore then I won't and and it depends on what level of rehab they're at so like at AFL level these guys that I'm working with now you know I, I can't keep up with them every rep. Which movie or TV series has uh, impacted you the most and why? I don't watch a lot of um, series I suppose but yeah I, I watch a lot of medical docos <laughs> which is pretty nerdy really. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's one that stands out? Uh, I think it's an it's called an hour to save your life, which is oh, yeah. it puts what we do into perspective. Where yeah. it follows, um, yeah, the elite paramedics and emergency doctors in London, really, in a helicopter, and they're literally doing open heart surgery on the side of the road to save people's lives. Yeah. So that kind of makes you think, oh, someone's got a sore hammy or a sore groin. You're not too fussed by it, but. Um, yeah, Probably Cool Runnings. Yeah. Cool Runnings is a great movie. That's my favourite movie. <laughs> yep, yep. Any other things that you're excited about for the rest of the year? Yeah, so we'll just give a quick plug. We've got a, um, it's called The Athletic Hip and Groin that um, Chris Perkin and myself uh, are running through the West Coast Health and High Performance 
clinic. Yep. Uh, it's in Perth on the 4th and 5th of December. Um, so, yeah, anyone that is quarantine-free uh, from anywhere else all around the world listening, um, we'd love to have you. Um, we've got some really great presenters speaking. You can check it out on the website at um, westcoasthealth.com.au. Um, yeah, from various fields, we've got uh, radio, radiologist, sports doc, Ben Ray Smith, who I mentioned before, Jake Lalich, who's uh, more of a, a movement style uh, practitioner that does a lot of similar stuff to Steve Gravina that you mentioned before. 